Good afternoon. This is Pastor Randy McAllister. We want to welcome you to Standing Up today. We hope and pray that you're having a wonderful day, and uh, we welcome you to the program. We started a new series on Wednesday dealing with... uh, dealing with keeping your heart out of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. And uh, that scripture reads this, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the springs of life. Now, there's different uh, opinions as to what the word heart means. Some people say your emotions, and, it, and it's for sure that. But it's, it's more than that. The heart, uh, when you talk about a person's heart, it's really the core. It's the center it is the sum of who they are. It is their reactions to God. It is their. Um, it is. It is really uh, their nature. Um, all of these things combined would make up the heart, and and so we've been dealing with the heart. On on Wednesday we dealt with the heart's dangers, and then on Thursday we dealt with the heart's position, and today we're going to deal with the heart's power. And, and I think that if the Lord will help me, I think this will really bless you. So let's get into it. Father, we just come before you today. We ask for your grace, your help, your anointing, and your wisdom as we minister. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, um, I've, I've, I've seen many people uh, through the years. I've, I've pastored for a long time. And I've watched a lot of people through the years that, uh, you know, you've heard the, the, the term, they lost heart. Uh, but what really happens is something within them changes. Uh, this almost intangible place called the heart, that one of the definitions of heart in the Aramaic or the Hebrew is center, uh, really the core, what, what makes somebody who they are. I actually think the heart and the human nature the nature you're born with, talking about, well, that's just their nature, um, are, I think are, are, are at some point uh, linked together. But when somebody changes who they are in their heart, it is a fundamental, it is a fundamental change, whether it's good or bad, it, it changes everything. When your heart changes, everything else changes. I was thinking today of a of a, an example I did years ago, and the only reason I thought about this example is somebody had taken a picture of it, and I, and I found the picture, and I don't know where it came from. But years and years and years ago, I was trying to describe uh, the consequences of of the sin nature, and uh, and how that um, all these other things, uh, you know, that 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 a that a person. That we may see, we may see their actions, we may see a lot of other things. But, but if if their uh, if their if their nature has been changed, how everything else crumbles. And I built people into a, a literal pyramid. I had I don't know six or seven or eight young people come up, and they got on each other's backs, and 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 we did this analogy. And and really, that would even probably be a better. Uh, uh, um, example of the heart, that the heart would be at the very bottom of that. And when the heart changes, when a person's heart changes, everything else would change as well. You would watch the outside change, but it's because there's been something fundamentally change on the inside. When we talk about somebody becoming hardened of heart, uh, you know, where, where this uh, again, this intangible place that we can't really touch or feel, uh, and that you can't even really completely explain. Uh, something changes. Something in their their what we what we would say something in their spirit changes. There's been a change to the core of who they are, and then it kind of flows out from there. And we talked about the heart's dangers on Wednesday. We talked about what's dangerous to the heart, and Thursday we talked about the heart's position where it needs to be positioned before God and really even with people. And then today we're going to talk about the power of the heart. And I want to talk about uh, the first two points I'm going to make almost seem like I'm repeating myself, but they're not really the same. And it comes out of Joshua chapter 14, and we're talking about the person of Caleb. There were only two uh, Jewish people that, that went into the promised land of the original three million that left Egypt, and that was Joshua and Caleb. 
And in Joshua chapter 14, we have the words that Caleb rehearsed to Joshua. And this is what it says in verse 7. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt with fear, but I followed the Lord my God. And I'm going to stop right there. Um, Joshua or Caleb had been a man that his heart had been prepared by the Spirit of God. This man, no doubt, was a man that walked with the Lord before he was ever sent into the promised land. He had a, a walk with God. There had been conditioning of his heart before God. And by the time he went in with these 11 other men, uh, we all know the story. If you know the Bible, you know 10 men saw what was in the promised land and said, truly, the promised land is flowing with milk and honey. But they saw the giants and the walled cities, and and they came back with, the, the Bible says, an evil report of unbelief. And only Joshua and Caleb came back with a positive report. You see, the difference is, is that before they ever went in, Caleb had a heart that had been prepared by God. And the power of a heart that's been prepared by God is that it can withstand unbelief. It can be around people of unbelief and not get moved. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. The only way, the only way that you will be able to endure unbelief, being around people of unbelief, is to have a heart that is prepared by God in privacy with Him. You have to have a private life with the Lord. You have to have a, I said this yesterday, that the heart is kind of like uh, uh, an athlete. It, an athlete has to be conditioned. The heart has to be conditioned, not just once, not just twice, but over and over and over again. It has to be conditioned by time spent with the Lord, time in the Word, time in prayer. You've got to spend time conditioning your heart because otherwise you'll be around unbelief. You'll be around things that are foreign to faith and you won't be able to endure them. You will not be able to stand up to them. I want you to think of this. Caleb endured 40 years of unbelief. Think of that. Millions upon millions upon millions of people uh, around him. Well, not millions, but, but three up to, up to possibly three million people. And if you think of some dying and some being born and whatever... Caleb lived around millions of people, and the vast, 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 vast majority of them were unbelievers, not in the sense that they were not a, 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 a believer at all, but they didn't believe in the promises of God. They didn't have the faith to go into the promised land. And this man's faith endured all of that. His heart endured it because it was conditioned before God. We know that that Caleb did not just go in uh, you know, one time and, 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 and pray and read the Bible, you know, well, he didn't have the Bible, but, uh, you know, he didn't just go in one time and pray and seek the Lord. This man was a man of God. He was a man constantly seeking God. How do I know that? I know that because there's no other way. It's never been different. It's always been the same. There's no other way a man's heart could stay in faith and, and be around that much unbelief and stay in faith without it being conditioned all the time. The power of your heart is that if it's conditioned consistently before God, it can endure unbelief. It can endure people of unbelief. It can endure time of unbelief, but it can endure unbelief. And I think this is one of the most powerful truths that we could be given. This is a powerful, powerful truth. Because listen, not everybody, I had a lady tell me once she's been with the Lord now for uh, a couple of years, well, several years now. But she told me one time, she said, Pastor, the only person that has to believe for this is you. It doesn't matter if anybody else does. It doesn't even matter. She said, it doesn't even matter if I do. She said, all that matters is whether you do. And I thought, I've, 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 I've reflected back on that conversation many, many times. She, like I said, she's been with the Lord, I don't know, for five or six years now. But, but I've reflected back on, that, on what she said to me many, many times. She was a great woman of faith. She had a, an incredible faith in God. And, she, and that's what she told me. She said, the only person that needs to believe for this is you. And many times, listen, the only person that, that needs to believe for that marriage or that family or that church is you. It doesn't matter if anybody else does. It matters if you do. And so 
This is the power of the heart. Number two, uh, the power of, of a heart is to overpower what you see. These are two different things. They come out of the same scripture. But Joshua said, when I went into the promised land, I saw the same giants. I saw the same walled cities. I saw everything they saw. But it was interpreted differently. Why? Because, again, his heart had been prepared before God. His heart had been prepared uh, before God. And, and this is so incredibly, incredibly powerful because we're going to see many things. We're going to see many things that are going to contradict our faith. You know, uh, when, when you look at Paul in the storm going to Rome, you see where he goes below deck and he has this encounter, <coughs> excuse me, with an angel of the Lord. And the Bible says, and God tells him that they're going to make it through the storm and the ship's going to go down, but, but everybody's going to be saved. And, and he comes back up. And, and nothing in the natural has changed. The storm is still there and, and the, the strife is still there and the fear is still there and the people or the panic is still there. But the only thing that's changed is what he has in his heart. And, and many times, listen, what we see doesn't change. It doesn't change easily. And sometimes it doesn't change even with a lot of time. But a heart that's been prepared by God will help you to overcome what you see, the power, listen, the power of your heart. Number three, the power of your heart will overpower what you see in yourself. These all through all three of these things happened at the same time in numbers. It says that when the spies went in, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. This is, this was not Caleb. Caleb did not see himself as a grasshopper. And then that's a, that's a weird statement. But what it means is, is the way that they reflected, they thought the giants saw them the way they saw themselves. And listen, when you go up against the devil, what you think about yourself is going to be more important probably than anything else. And the Bible says that these people, again, their heart had not been conditioned by time with the Lord. They did not see themselves as men and women of faith. They did not see themselves the way that God saw them. They saw themselves the way that they assumed the giants saw them. And the, the thing about the, uh, the thing that they were wrong about is the giants didn't even see him that way. The Bible says the giants had heard about their conquering and the giants were actually scared of them. The, the giants were actually scared of, of the children of Israel. They had heard about all of these miracles that God had done for them, and they were actually petrified of the children of Israel. And, 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 and yet they saw themselves as grasshoppers, the Bible says in Numbers 13 and verse 33. Again, uh, it says, And there also we saw the, the, the Nephilim, the son of Anak, as uh, uh, the sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim, and we became like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. And so what they saw made them see themselves as small. And I'll tell you something. These are all things that you are going to encounter when you uh, walk through life. At some point, you're going to see that you're going to deal with these things. But this is the power of a heart that's been prepared by God. Listen, in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30, it says, let me see that I'm just I'm just turning there. I lost my place. I apologize to you. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30, it says this. It says a tranquil heart is life to the body. Um, and this actually means this. It means uh, it, a strong heart is life to the body. So what that actually means is that your heart, the condition of your heart in the spirit, I'm not talking about your fleshly heart. But the condition of your heart is, is, uh, is going to determine um, whether you stand or not, your strength. So what, what do I mean by that? I mean this. Sometimes when we look at a person that's been able to endure a lot, we don't often think uh, of this. We think that they made it because they were just strong-minded or uh, you know, they just had a strong personality or uh, you know, they just you know, had con self-confidence or whatever. 
but but it doesn't say that. It says in Proverbs that it's the heart that makes a man strong. And, and so it says a sound heart, this is the King James, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. So when we're talking about sound, we're talking about uh, a heart that is uh, actually in the Hebrew, it means concrete. It means to be solid. When you're solid in your heart, when you're solid on the inside, you're going to stand. You're going to stand. You're going to you're going to be able to stand against whatever life throws at you and the devil throws at you and all these things. And like I said, sometimes we just think, well, they have a strong personality or or they're so strong or whatever. I'm going to tell you something. There are people that are naturally strong. There are people that to a degree have a strong mind. They they have a lot of willpower. They have a lot of internal fortitude. But that's not most of us. Most of us are not built that way, and we need something from God to be strong. We need something from God to stand, and God can give that to you. Number four, the power of your heart is when it's yoked to Jesus. It's when it's yoked to Jesus. In Matthew 11 and verse 29, Jesus said, Come unto, come, uh, come unto me, all you that labor and are, and are, and are heavy laden. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light and you will find rest for your souls. What was Jesus saying? Jesus was saying something that every farmer would have known. He he was taking a farming truth and he was using it in the spirit. But every farmer would have known what Jesus was making reference to. When you were trying to train a a young oxen to be a good plower, you would take a young ox and you would put them with an old ox and you would yoke them together. The yoke was the, was the wood and metal harness that would go over the top of the, the necks of both animals and it hooked them together. And, and, and what they did this for is that that old oxen would teach that new oxen to not fight the yoke, to not go too fast, to not go too slow, that, and 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 he would he would teach him by being yoked to him. He would teach that young ox that listen. There's no point in working yourself to death. Just be just pace yourself. There's no point in trying to go too fast and prove anything. There's no point in trying to escape. And he would actually that old oxen would teach that young ox by being yoked together. And what Jesus is saying is, if you'll come and walk with him. He will teach you. There, there'll, be, there'll be training that will go from the Lord to you by simply walking with him. The Lord will teach you how to do what you need to know how to do. The Lord will teach you to not work in your own flesh. The Lord will teach you. He'll teach you all of these things by being yoked to him. How are you yoked to Jesus? You're yoked to him by following him, by just, by just simply serving him. I was telling a young man the other day, and he looked at me and he said, you know, I've never been able to make it as a Christian. I've never really been able to stay serving God and all this stuff. And I said, you want to know why? And he said, why? And I said, because you've never released control. No matter how close you've come to really serving God, you've never actually laid down control of your life. And it's not until I yoke myself to Jesus, until it's not until I finally relinquish control and I give it to the Lord, that all of a sudden these things begin to make their way into my heart and I begin to learn. I begin to learn because I'm yoked to the Lord. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not running. I'm not bucking. You know, that, that old ox will teach that younger one, quit fighting it. You're just going to make it worse. He teaches him by walking with him. And this is the same thing. It's the same thing. I imagine how many young oxen, when they were first uh, yoked up, thought, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that or I can escape or I can get out of this or I can do it different. But that old ox just keeps plowing and it teaches that younger oxen what to do. And in the same way, once we are yoked to Jesus, once we're not going anywhere, once we're in line and once we're in line with him and we've decided this is what we're doing, we will begin to learn and we will begin to change. So number five, the heart's power is that it can be convinced. I'm going to tell you something. Once you have convinced 
somebody's been convinced in their heart, the game's over, both good or bad. When you've convinced somebody in their heart, in the core of who they are, the center of who they are, it's over. It says, as water, as in water, face reflects face, so the heart of man reflects man. What is that saying? That's saying that in the same way that when I look at, especially in that day, in the same way I would study my face by looking down into water. What he's saying is the heart is a place of dealing with you. The heart is a place. The power of a the power of a godly heart is a heart of a man or a woman that's been reflective. They've dealt with themselves. They've stared long into the mirror of their own life and they have dealt with themselves. I heard David Wilkerson say something uh, two nights ago, my wife and I, or three nights ago, my wife and I were listening to an old message of his on authority because I've been teaching on authority. And, and uh, David Wilkerson said something that I've never heard anybody else say, but he said, authority is only given to men and women of God that have thoroughly dealt with themselves. They have in the privacy of their own life, in the privacy of their own heart, they have dealt with with themselves. They've allowed God to deal with the deep private things of their own life. And he said this, he said, I believe that's what Jesus meant when he said this kind, these demons and devils can only come out by prayer and fasting. He's not talking about fasting and prayer to cast out devils. He's talking about fasting and prayer to let the Lord examine my own life. I've done deep searching of my own life, my own motives, my own, uh, what drives me. I've, I've, I've allowed God to deeply search myself. I've dealt with the ugly in myself. I've dealt with the things I don't want to deal with. I've dealt with the things that, that I would rather look away from, or I've, I'm even ashamed of. I've allowed the spirit of God to deal with the deep things of my life. And I believe that's true. And what he listen, the powerful heart, a powerful heart is a heart that has spent time dealing with itself. It has spent time being reflective. It has spent time allowing God, being honest with yourself, dealing with these places. I, I've throughout my uh, walk with God, I've wondered, God, why have you spent so much time dealing with these little things in my life that, that I don't think, I, I mean, obviously they're important to the Lord, but I, I didn't realize how important they were to you. And, and will anybody ever even know about this? And it does, but you know, the truth is the Lord doesn't care if anybody else knows because true divine authority is given to people that have dealt with what people will never see. They've dealt with what nobody will ever know about. Nobody will ever know about many of the things, the places in a true man or woman of God's heart that they've had to deal with in order to have true spiritual authority in their life. So a powerful heart is a heart that has been reflective. I'm not talking about being introspective to the point where I'm so caught up looking inside of myself that I can't see anything else. I'm not talking about that. Um, but I am talking about somebody that is, that is totally and completely willing to deal with the ugly in their life. Totally willing to, to deal with and, and take, responsibility for, um, take responsibility for what is in themselves. Okay. The next thing is a powerful heart is a prepared heart. We've talked a lot about this in the last three days. Uh, but in Proverbs 16.1... It says this, the plans, of, the plans of the heart belong to a man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. What's he talking about? He's talking about a man that has deeply been deeply uh, before the Lord contemplating whether or not his plan, if his plan is truly God's plan or if his plan is just his plan. He's trying to be honest with the Lord. He is, he's, he's put his plan out before God and says, is this your plan? Is this really your plan, Lord? He's allowed God to examine that plan. And if it's not the Lord, he's willing to lay it down and take 
what up, what, take up what he believes is God's will. Number, number uh, seven is the heart believes. Now, this is probably the most powerful part of this whole thing. I'm not saying I'll be powerful in the way I bring it out. But the Bible says that in Romans 10 that, that from the heart a man believes. Listen, this place called the heart is where salvation is born. Salvation is not born in my work. Salvation is not born in, 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 it's not born in my soul. It's not born in my spirit. It's born in my heart. Listen to me. The heart of man, Romans 10 says, with the heart man believes unto salvation. The heart is where faith is born. It is in this center place in you. It's this, it's this unknown, unseen, really indescribable place called your heart that faith is born, that salvation is born in this place called your heart. There can be nothing more powerful than that. That's the most powerful thing that can ever happen. So out of your heart is where salvation comes from. Out of your heart is where faith is born that transforms your life. Listen, we're out of time. Uh, I, I just about got through this, uh, this, this week. We'll pick it up or we won't pick it up on Monday. We're going to start a different series on Monday, but I hope and pray you've enjoyed this and it's ministered to you. For Pastor Randy standing up, KGTC Radio, have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.